Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create this amazing face blur filter. So as you can see here, it also works on multiple faces. So this is a very simple project that you can do under 30 lines of code. You can write this and you can digitally blur all the faces within a video. So this is a great weekend project to try out and use it in real world applications. So without further ado, let's get started. This video is sponsored by brilliant.org. They provide interactive and a wide range of courses. Brilliant teaches you the fundamental concepts underlying a variety of subjects, including algebra, statistics, algorithm, programming, and much more. You will be able to answer equation-related problems even when it is impossible to manually solve them if you are familiar with graphs and their relationship to the equations that they present. If you are just starting your exploration of geometry or algebra, Brilliant provides with the best courses. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for 30 full days, visit brilliant.org slash murtaza or click the link in the description below. The first 200 viewers will get 20% off Brilliant's annual membership. Do you want to implement your computer vision ideas to solve real world problems? Or upgrade your resume by enhancing your computer vision skills? Then the computervision.zone is the perfect platform for you. CVZone is a one-stop computer vision platform with over 100,000 users with courses sold in over 80 different countries. If you want to commercialize your computer vision ideas, then the Computer Vision Web Development course is the perfect course for you. Here you will learn the basics of web development and computer vision as well as how to integrate them to solve real-world problems like customer engagement, car counter, face attendance, shirt size measurement, and a lot more. Advanced Stone Programming is another great course that focuses on the practical implementation. Here you will learn the basics of drone programming as well as advanced concepts like face following, body following, gesture control, and a lot more. If developing mobile apps is your thing, then check out our Computer Vision mobile apps course. Here you will learn the basics and create several apps including object detection, augmented reality, face detection, document scanner, and a lot more. The best part is that you will create a single app that will work both on iOS and Android. If you are passionate about integrating hardware with software, then check out our Computer Vision Arduino course. Here you will learn the basics along with amazing projects such as conveyor belt assembly, face tracking, lamp gesture control, face door lock and a lot more. The Computer Vision Game Development is another great course where fun meets programming. Here you will learn to create games such as Fruit Ninja, Balloon Pop, Squid Game, Cookie Cutter, all using the latest computer vision techniques. Not only that, you will learn to compile your awesome game to an .exe file to make it accessible to all. You can also learn to implement computer vision on embedded devices with our Computer Vision with Jetson Nano course. Here you will learn the basics of Jetson Nano and computer vision along with creating exciting projects like lane following robot, eye tracking, object following and a lot more. All these courses have a clear path from basics to advanced with maximum knowledge in a short amount of time. So check out the links in the description to get started with your computer vision journey today. So the first thing we will do is to go to our new project. This is PyCharm. If you're not familiar with this, it's the PyCharm IDE. And what you have to do is you have to create a new project. We are calling it the face bear. So you will go to file settings and then we are going to install our packages, which we can do in projects, interpreter, and then add. So here, what we need is CV zone. Uh, that is our base package. It will install OpenCV for us. And we also need media pipe, media pipe package. Uh, that will allow us to detect the face. So now you can use any face detector that you want. We are going to use the one that is provided by Google by the name media pipe. And uh, the CV zone actually is a library. It's a wrapper that will allow you to work with media pipe a bit uh, more easily, I would say. So, and then of course we do need to check if OpenCV is working fine. The latest version had an issue where it does not auto recommend. So we have to check if that works. If it doesn't work, then we can always downgrade it to a previous version. So right now it's installing the packages, both of them. So once they are done, then we are going to try out. 
Okay, so both the packages have been installed and now what we can do is we can write import CV2 and here we are going to write cap equals cap equals CV2 dot video. So as you can see, it does not recommend. Uh, so what, what we can do is we can downgrade OpenCV. So we can go to settings and the OpenCV Python. Uh, we can double click on that, specify version, and go to 4.5.4.60. So this is the one I've been using and it works fine. So that's why I recommend you install that too. So once that is done, if we go back and we can write cv2 dot video and you can see it actually recommends us. So I believe my camera number is two. So I have multiple cameras installed, but for you, most probably it will be ID number zero. So this is the camera ID that you have to use. So then we are going to write cap dot set. This is for the width and the height. So we are going to give it uh, the prop ID number three, which is the width as 640 and the cap dot set. We are going to give prop ID number four as 480, which is the height. So what happened there? Okay, so once that is done, what we'll do is we'll create a while loop. We'll say while true and we will say success, success and image equals cap dot read. And then we are going to write CV2 dot wait key. We'll give a one millisecond delay. And before that, we have to write CV2 dot I am show. We have to show the image. So I will write here image and which image are we showing? We are showing IMG. So this is basically the boilerplate code for running your webcam and uh, hopefully it will work fine. So we'll right click and press on run main. So we are going to wait for it to get started. So there you go. Now you can see my webcam, uh, it's running. And now what we will do is we are going to find our faces. So we have multiple faces in the image, doesn't matter. We are going to find all of them and all of them we are going to blur out. So what we will do is to do that, we are going to use a CV zone. So we'll write from CV zone dot face uh, detection module, not the face mesh. Uh, we are going to import the face detector. So the face detector actually uses media pipe package and it is very easy to use. Uh, all you have to do is you have to write the detector detector equals uh, face detector and we have to give in some parameters so the the main parameter is basically the minimum detection threshold so the the confidence and we are going to give it a value of 0 0.75 so again if you want to change it you can do that as well if you think that this is not the optimum value you can increase if you increase the value you will have less detections if you decrease the value, you will have more detections, but it might detect the wrong things as well. It might not be a face that it detects. So you have to find the correct balance. So once that is done, uh, while we are within the while loop, we have to give it the image again and again, and we have to ask it to find the image. So how can you do that? You can write here detector.findFaces and you have to give in the image on which you want to find the face and you have to give in whether you want to draw or not so by default it is true so we are going to keep it true and later on if we want we can remove it. so here it will give us the image back it will return us the image and it will return us all the bounding box information so we are going to write here bounding boxes so with uh, an s so it's plural so Let's run that and hopefully it will give us uh, multiple faces and all the bounding boxes as well. So there we have it. You can see my face is being detected and there's a high probability that I'm a human because it is telling me so. So that's the idea. And then uh, you can also detect multiple faces. So here I have uh, multiple faces being detected. You can see uh, it detects fine. There you go. And if we scroll on the other side, there you go. And if we zoom out, there you go, it's detecting both the faces. So that's the idea that we are able to detect multiple faces. And once we do that, we can blur them out all at the same time. So 
what is the next step? The next step is basically finding this bounding box information. So we already have that in bounding boxes. So what it gives us is it gives us a dictionary. And inside that dictionary, we have a lot of different things. So what exactly are those? We can simply go to find faces. So you can press on control and click, and that will give you the result. And here uh, you are getting a return of bounding box list. Uh, actually, that doesn't tell us much. Here you can see that this is the bounding box information of a single bounding box for a single face. So it's a dictionary that has the ID, that has the bounding box information, which is basically the X, Y, width and height. And then you have the detection score. You can find the score. And then you also have the center. So CX and CY. So if you want the bounding box center, you can find that too. So how can you get this information? So first of all, you have to check if there is a face detected. So you will say that if bounding boxes is not empty, then we are going to loop through all the bounding boxes. So we will write for bounding box, bounding box, for bounding box in bounding boxes. So we are looping through all of these boxes. We are going to find the X, Y, width and height, which will come from the bounding box bounding box <laughs> so that is a bit confusing because uh, that itself is a dictionary and inside that dictionary we have this uh, item and in this item we have x y width and height that we are unpacking in these values so that's the basic idea so now for each face we have the x y width and height because we are looping through all the faces so for every given iteration, we have the X, Y width and height information of that face. So now what we can do is, in order to um, understand it further, we can take this information and we can crop our image. So I will take that face and I will create a new image out of that. So how can we do that? We can simply write that uh, image crop equals so that's our cropped image uh, that is equal to the main image but at specific points so we are cropping the image so how do you crop you crop by giving the starting so you know that uh, image is basically a matrix and you can define the starting point of the matrix and the ending point in both width and height so first of all we have to give the height so the starting height is basically y and the ending height is y plus height and then the starting x is x and what happened uh, why is it not pressing the starting x is x and the ending x is x plus width so this way we are basically giving it the information that this is the cropped image and to display this image we will simply write cv2 dot i am show and uh, to to make it unique uh, because each face is it, it might be different or should we keep it the same no we cannot keep it the same because we can have multiple faces so we have to give it a different name for each image so what we can do is we can give it iteration number uh, so we we are going to write here that I and this and here we are going to write um, enumerate so that will give us the iteration number as well so here we can simply write string I or or let's write uh, let's write an F string and we are going to write that image cropped and we are going to give in then we are going to give in i so that will be a long name it will be easy to drag um, long so here then we'll write image crop then there you go so if we have multiple faces now it will give us multiple images uh, the spelling of cropped are wrong because we have a double p okay so yeah that's that's fine and let's run it and see if it works 
So there you go. We are getting a face and this is the cropped face uh, that we are getting. And if we bring in another face, there you go. We have another face like that. And I'm getting another image here and it's very difficult to drag it. There you go. So now uh, the IDs will flip, but the idea is that we are getting two faces. So that should be fine. So that's good. And now what we will do is once we have this, uh, what we need to do is we need to blur it and then we need to put it back on our image. So how can we do that? Uh, we are going to comment this out because we don't want to see multiple images. So what we can do is we can simply write here that uh, image blur equals cv2 dot blur and we want to blur our image crop and how much do we want to blur we have to give in the size of the matrix so you can give any value that you want uh, what i have found is that 35 by 35 so you have to give in odd numbers not even numbers so 35 by 35 is a reasonable blur that will not let you see the person. Now, it is up to you how much you want to blur. Uh, if you want to blur it even more, you can do that too. Once you blur it, now we have a blurred image. Now we need to take that image and put it back on our original image. So how can we do that? It's very simple. We will say that image at this point, this is where we got it from, and this is where we are putting it back is equal to image blur. So replace that with that on top of that. That's how simple it is. So if we run this now, we should have our blurred face. So there you go. As you can see, my face is blurred and you have that image uh, percentage around as well. So now if I bring in another face, that should be blurred as well. So this is very handy as you can see. Now, but you see that when I come close, uh, it actually gives an error. So what is actually happening is that it is going out of bounds. So we have to limit it. And uh, to do that, what we have to do is we have to say that if X is less than zero, then x equals zero x equals zero and the same thing we have to do for y if y is less than zero uh, then y equals zero so that it doesn't go out of bounds so uh, that's the idea and now if we run it again we should not have this error coming back so there you go we have our image if i go left and right uh, nothing happens, uh, there is no error. And if I bring in the other image as well, if I move it around, you can see nothing happens. So that error is actually gone. So if I zoom in, zoom out, as you can see, that works out well. Now, if you wanted to remove, uh, if you wanted to remove this uh, drawing, you can write here draw equals false. So if you wanted to do that, you can do that too. But in our case, we are not going to do that. I think that's fine uh, with our bounding box. So this was our project for today. As you can see, it's very simple, very easy to follow. And uh, under 30 lines of code, we have written this blur filter. And this will work on multiple faces. And it is quite useful, especially in a lot of uh, cases in television where you have to blur out uh, confidential interviews or if you do not get permission from the uh, actual person you can blur them out digitally rather than putting trackers and uh, blurring them or using other different methods so this is it for today i hope you have learned something new if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you loved it share it with your friends and i will see you in the next one